Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Summit 5 Qualifiers. We're here in the Americas regions. It's Vegetable Esports Club facing off against Infamous. I'm Lyrical Dota, joined today by Mop Pack. Sir, how are you doing? You excited about this game we got here? Yeah, I have actually never got to cast the veggies. So, you know, the caster folks themselves. So that's going to be a pretty exciting experience for me. And then, of course, Infamous, uh, if you guys, you know, maybe you're just tuning in because it's Veggie's playing and you're not uh, around all that often, but all these guys would be the old unknown squad you guys might be more familiar with. Yeah, and particularly, uh, I, I've been watching a couple of their games recently in the Nanyang Championships. Kaitaro Hayama, remember, was really well known for his Huskar play back in the uh, the Frankfurt Majors and the the qualifiers for it, and him being able to to make it through there um, as part of that that old unknown squad. And um, he's really been able to play that pretty effectively. He's been running Life Stealer or Huskar whenever he gets a chance, and has just been so strong with his armlet toggles. It's really disgusting to watch. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on maybe some of those dazzle picks or uh, you know anything else along those lines. Things could get uh, a little bit dicey here. But first off, not too shocking, uh, we'll be getting ourselves the Phoenix first overall, the Win Ray. Mm. Uh, in terms of ignored heroes, eh, not too much left in the pool. Like really, like the Doom, the Bounty Hunter, the Beastmaster, the Slider, a lot of the other very potent heroes uh, have been removed here. So. Uh, some of the more solid, like the four roaming tusk, is something that uh, a lot of teams have been looking for lately, trying to apply that pressure mid. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how they use the sunray. Obviously, very good right now with all these you know tanky cores we got running amok. Yeah. Well, and the other thing that we've also been seeing occasionally is like in the in the NA region, particularly the Elder Titan early on um, is something that gets run. But there's going to be that four position tusk that you were talking about. Um, you know, I played a game with him yesterday. He feels pretty good. You can get like a Blightstone if you want. You could end up going for an Orb of Venom if you want to try and roam. And whichever way you end up running him, like the, the nerfs that he got previously mainly have to do with his once he gets that level six, the Walrus Punch uh, additional cooldown. And... It, either before or after that point, he's still the same hero. He's still incredibly strong, pretty much. Yeah, he's just so great right now. Like, that really roaming into the mid lane. Uh, some people just prefer it over the Earth Spirit. They share a couple, you know, similar r roles and um, attributes and everything like that. But the fact that the Snowball, you're invulnerable during it, just makes him so much more valuable than some of the other stuff. Like, Earth Spirit, in a way, is as well, but you can just hop in the wave it. We see supports interrupting that all the time by just making sure they're in the proper position. And that was one of the reasons that Spirit Picker started to get phased out, is because people started just picking heroes that could stun him, lift him, do something with him before you could actually make that connection. But Tusk obviously doesn't run into that problem. And this is one of the best pairings you can get with Tusk, if not the best pairing, I would say, in the mid lane, mm -hmm. the Death Prophet. It is just disgusting it's nasty man you put on that first initial siphon oh, yeah. the ice shards come out the snowballs coming and you're just so busy trying to get around these obstacles that the death prophet just totally destroys your life force so I, i'd like to see something like maybe a bat rider or something that can get over top maybe in a pl um in that mid lane to get away from that yeah well, for now, at least, they're just going to be going back for the Disruptor. Looking like they want to try and get aggressive with this draft. You've got the Phoenix there. You're talking about the win rate for the sustain in lane and being able to, you know, keep things pushed out if you're trying to pressure a tower. And then Disruptor also, obviously, you want to be aggressive with this hero. So looks like right now Veggie's trying to challenge Infamous at least a little bit with their early potential to try and take objectives. Um, I think that I am going to switch over real quick just to, to make sure that the stream is looking good. I'm going to switch over to the splash screen. But one thing that I wanted to mention before we end up doing that was sexy bambo one of the stand-ins uh from kp and then also we do have matthew is standing in from lucini for infamous he's been there throughout the past couple of games but isn't an official member of that roster so two stand-ins we'll have to see how that affects him yeah that's true at least we're kind of evened up on each side here i suppose and uh, also pretty important to note, I suppose, that the Veggie Squad don't actually play all that much together, right? I mean, they got together. I know they played some JDL. They tried that for a bit, and then uh, the open qualifiers and everything. So it's just a little bit of an experience for them to become better casters, you know, try their hand a little bit of competitive Dota as well, win a few games along the way. Mm. Definitely. I, I think that it's it's cool to be able to see it happening. And, um, of course, Infamous very much also uh, another squad with a pretty storied history. Uh, one of the only teams that's ever been to, I think, uh, several members of it. It was Katero Hayama, Excel, Greedy. I don't think that Bang was a part of that squad. It was Z-Talk and one other. So they've replaced two members throughout the course of their, their sort of history together, but still have kept that core together. And that's something that's pretty impressive. And I, I, I'd like to be able to see them 
them move forward. And maybe the Summit 5 is one of the ways that you end up being able to make that happen. But the Juggernaut band out, um, pretty self-explanatory. You can see that there's going to be some potential for early pushing, even if they don't go for it necessarily right off the bat, they could go back for it. Um, so I like those bands. And then the Lifesteal are also trying to take that out of Katero Hayama's hands. Yeah, they'll still have to keep their eyes at least on the Hoskar, I would say. You never know, right? <laughs> I think it just pops on that fifth pick. It's a good time to ban it somewhere around there. Uh, in terms of the mid laner, we didn't see any pressure come on to that from Infamous like for that second drafting phase, so that's good. A lot of options still left there for the veggies, and whatever they want to toss. We, I mean, we don't really even know who's going to be going mid. I assume it'll be Blitz still, mm. uh, and probably... Bambo off lane Merlini core uh, in position one, I guess. That's what I would assume with then uh, Cap taking the four and Purge going on the five. Um, and then uh, I, I guess that that's what they would do. I mean, Bambo played off lane when he was on Kai P, right? Yeah, for the most part, that's always been like one of his best roles. Right. So yeah, it makes sense to me. But yeah, Lion is going to also be taken now. Um, we've seen what this hero can do time and again. I always feel like this guy is just going to be in the meta. You've got great burst damage, the ability to instantly disable one of these cores. I would be a little bit concerned that if if Veggies try and just sort of go all out balls to the walls with their, their pushing strategy potential, that Lion doesn't have the greatest depush, but they don't have to do that either. They've got a lot of different ways that they can play this draft at this stage. So still leaving it fairly open. Yeah, one thing that we've been seeing from a lot of teams on the dire side is also that reactive style where you're just kind of hanging out, just kind of chilling, getting some heavier, more intensive cores to fire them up. Um, in this case, they don't have that four-wheel hero to really do that. It'll be the Phoenix, not someone who does the Iron Talent jungling or anything like that. But you have a Disruptor and a Phoenix who are both very good at showing up at towers and anywhere within that range of the tower being able to help defend and punish any sort of an overextension, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just from the glimpse being brought back, uh, early sunray is just murder. If you're just trying to get into like, some sort of a 1v1, you're just barely escaping, and we all know the range of that thing. You just can't quite get away. Uh, and it's actually going to be the tiny pickup. Now, this is also a Bambo classic. I don't know if they're going to try some sort of dual offlane shenanigans, perhaps, uh, where they run the tiny down there, or maybe it'll just be a, a casual mid or position one. Very, very much a mix-up hero. Yeah, definitely. You can run it there and try and toss the Death Prophet back, but you're usually going to be able to survive just because Spirit Siphon is still a ridiculous spell early in the game. Um, it's also worth noting that this, these are two teams that are coming from very different positions as far as practice is concerned. Almost all of the Veggie Esports squad were at Epicenter and not really playing together that much. Um, at all. Meanwhile, Infamous have played through like two separate qualifiers uh, as a team over and over and over again. And even though this stand-in Matthew, he, he's a stand-in for their team, he's played through each of those qualifiers as well. So they've got a lot of synergy and not to say necessarily that Veggie Esports don't themselves, but that is something where they might not quite be as as uh, all in tune together. So the Night Stalker taken and then the Earthshaker. Yo, the Bambo hero. All right, this is, well, the second I saw the Phoenix, I wanted to bring this up, but I was like, oh, but Earthshaker's so bad. This is how I imagined it going. It's Blitz saying, or well, Bambo being like, yo, pick me Earthshaker. Pick me Earthshaker, man. We got a Phoenix. Like, it's going to be so good. And Blitz is like, no, I'm not picking the Earthshaker. The, the hero's awful right now, but we got it. It's okay. So this guy's magical right now when it comes to the Phoenix, simply because when that egg comes down and they're trying to deal with that thing, oh man, that's just like Echo Slam set up heaven. Very much down with that right now <laughs> for Bambo. I'm almost sure that'll be his hero. Uh, so I'm guessing that'll probably be maybe a mid Blitz Tiny. Mm. I don't know, that's pretty rough they against that Death those you're too. mentioning. Yeah, that's too. I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing uh, Merlini take it top. Um, it's a little bit of an odd safe laner nowadays, but you can see that a lot of the other good ones have been banned out. They've taken the Jug, they've taken the Sven, they've taken the, the Gyrocopter. Uh, who would they be up against then? It would be against the Night Stalker? That's not the worst thing in the world. You could probably... Maybe if you get like a nice glimpse, you could find a kill. It would take a lot of coordination. It would be a hard kill to find, I think. I guess uh, we'll find out shortly here with their last pick. They take out so, the Druid, too. Yeah. If it was that mid laner, I'd definitely be, still be looking for something a little bit survivable, but they uh, infamous, at least, don't seem to think so, banning out the, that gyrocopter. So. Maybe they just go Storm. 
<laughs> that is not the hero. All right, yeah, they're going to go for the DK. I, I, I like this more. It's something that's a little bit more survival against DP. You're going to be able to, you know, breathe fire down the creep wave if you need to. He still has to worry about the um, the spirit siphon, but he doesn't have to, like, find a kill in this lane. He can just sort of, I think, feel content last hitting with a bunch of points in that dragon blood. Yeah, and you think about comparing him to someone like the PL or the Bat Rider, and uh, you're going to get better setup of the Dragonite. I mean, the Lance is okay, but the stun's better from DK because you're always just kind of in there amongst the creeps. You never really know he's going to jump up and hop on top of you, and you get way more tower pressure too, and they're definitely lacking that, other than the tiny, but that's not until, you know, a little bit in the later stages of the mm -hmm. game. It doesn't really kick into those tier 1s and tier 2s. He's all about the racks, that guy. Yeah. Um, my last pick, the position 1. Oh, God. That is the position 1 of position 1s. As far as they go, I like the Lone Druid band, though. I think that was good. Yeah, this is uh, this is going to be a little bit of a scary one. I'm assuming this is going to be into that battle mage that you end up seeing with the Vanguard and then eventually into the Battle Fury later. It is such a scary build when they end up being able to execute it effectively because you can start showing up to fights. And the other thing is that Tiny really needs to be able to get those kills to accelerate. Like, who are you going to kill in this lineup? Everybody except for Lion is pretty tanky and has a way to get out of stuff. So... They're going to really need to try and find this this lion a couple of times and, and get the kills. Because, like, the 50%, you know, uh, spell shield, I mean, it's probably not going to be up to 50% early. But still, it's going to be really effective against that tiny burst combo. Yeah, it's a really good anti-mage game. They, it's essentially all magic damage, right? Like, yeah. Phoenix, Disruptor, Tiny, even Dragonite to a large extent. Until he starts getting up into I maybe mean, that armlet build, but... I, I guess that if they're able to get the Phoenix onto him, you've got Sunray, which is uh, which is pure. Um, True. And then also maybe Earthshaker here, he maxes Totem, doesn't he? You, you get, uh, or maybe just you get like the one point Totem and more points in, in Aftershock? Yeah, it'll be the Aftershock. Okay. The, um, the There is one good thing about Earthshaker, is he actually used to be picked up quite a bit back in the days when he was a little bit easier to offlane. You'd pick him up up against the Ember Spirit and the Anti Mage simply because they would often be out on their own, split pushing and farming. And that Blink Echo Slam can be a fantastic way to set up uh, either for your team or sometimes even just a solo kill. Like, there can be some pretty brutal damage if you're, you're not too cautious of someone like that Anti Mage or Ember out by yourself. So. Maybe maybe we'll see some big plays from Bambo. I always expect big plays from Bambo. He goes for them, you know. He's a memorable kind of guy. He doesn't do the little plays. He's all about the, you know, I might throw. Or you're going to remember this. Like, this odd shot. Get your odd shots ready, right, folks. Let's see That's it. where we're going. Oh, my God. I, I can't wait. We'll see if it ends up happening. Of course, also Infamous, an incredibly potent squad in their own right. Honestly, they played fairly well against Digital Chaos, even, in their game that we saw a little bit. Uh, I think that that was two days ago possibly i thought that there was a chance that they're even going to be able to take it there so a really tough test for veggie esports um the the good old beginning game pause comes out and hopefully uh, <laughs> we'll uh uh cap it, this is like some type of meta trolling that we're seeing right now i'm not sure exactly what's going on right here says the casters that we're late yeah i know uh, right they have no right to complain right now <laughs> <laughs> They're late for the game. They end up pausing the game afterwards. Unacceptable. Complete and total devastation. But we'll see how this ends up going. As far as the uh, the lanes space out, I think that it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we might see... I, I mean, is it basically just going to be the Phoenix and the Disruptor staying close to home up top and trying to trying to mess with this Night Stalker? Or what's, what's, the, what's the way to go for this? Uh, generally with Death Prophet, if you can, you'd love to just keep killing her over and over and over in that early game, right? Just mm -hmm. try and limit uh, her little bit of a snowball potential because from Infamous' side, they're just trying to create space with these four heroes and let Kataro do his thing. You know, farm up, become that big old monster, and the early Vanguard can help him fight, but he'd still rather be just hitting creeps a lot of the time. So they kind of have the map to themselves for the first 25, 28 minutes. And uh, if you can take up that Death Prophet, you look at the other three heroes, uh, Night Stalker's traditionally now run mostly as the four role. He's not often this core, so he's still a little bit weaker um, compared to maybe some of the other offlaners that could be in this scenario. And if mm. you cut out that Death Prophet, it's just a very weak quad core from them. Yeah. yeah, definitely. And I'm looking at this right now. They pinged out that they saw the Phoenix was up there in the top lane, and it does look like they're thinking about placing a ward. This one is going to go unspotted, though, so it should be fine for the moment. Uh, and as we're looking over here to the side, they haven't placed down any of the Observer Wards themselves. They're going to place one up on the high ground. So all good and well right from the start. 
Um, they actually ping out that the ward's over there, so maybe they know exactly where it is. Uh, and then meanwhile, on the other side, they were able to get one fairly deep for uh, before the, the anti-mage popped over to that side. So early ward battles going on. Yeah, now it's the uh, time for the rune battles. Mer Merlini, <laughs> cautiously uh, optimistic here, but it looks like they should be fine. I mean, this is a, a pretty potent squad if they wanted to run into this one. They've got Earth Spike, they've got Tusk with the Snowball, could do a lot of damage, and for the moment at least, it looks like they're going to back out, could throw out the Avalanche if he wants, that's oh, going to be no. a stun onto several, and they do have that Sunray, not sure if it's going to be nearly enough, though Capital is dropping fairly low, can they find the kill on the line? It doesn't look like it as of yet, they do manage to get it, Phoenix finds that, but is going to end up dying for his troubles, all of a sudden a little bit of murder going on in the river, running red, and I think that Bang might be able to escape from this one, he has another Breathe Fire in a second, meanwhile on the other side it looks like they're not going to be able to chase down and kill off merlini blitz runs away and the final tally is going to be two for one with first blood going the way of infamous yeah i thought that uh river color was like level 900 or something for red isn't it that, that's expensive stuff but get it for free veggies go. gaming nailed it <laughs> nice uh, quick deny there send home the night saga but purge no dive man eating these right clicks yeah, orb of venom as well it's a little bit of a trouble, and this is what I was talking about. It's what makes Tusk pretty freaking good right now, is you can get a couple of those early items. It just feels like they benefit the hero so much, um, and might get a caught here again. A Void is going to be there, and also getting body blocked by the creeps. They have a Shards if they want to dive this, but not going to go as of yet. So it looks like instead they're just going to back out for the moment, and Matthew healing up. So again, a battle up top here, the Tri versus Dual Lane. And on the opposite side of the map, not too surprising, but Bamboo is going to be having a very hard time down here. As, oh, top lane, they're getting a little bit close on the Capitalist. Is he dead? He might be. They've also got the uh, Avalanche if they want to throw it. Still level 2 now on Merlini. They go for the Snowball. The Sunray is going to heal him up for the moment. Trying to get out of there. They're doing a ton of damage, actually. Might be able to kill off Matthew. Is he going to go down? He ends up being able to get the solve, but another one comes out. As Purge finds the kill, there's going to be the Icarus side forward. Looking for a little bit more. This Night Stalker is very tanky, though. you got to be careful. He's got a lot of regen, too. My goodness. There is uh, no quarter given. Yeah, well, you were correct at the beginning here. They're just hanging up here, putting a little bit of pressure on this Night Stalker and Tusk, and that's also going to help reduce what they can do in the next opening minutes of this game. But mid lane, but he's he's holding his own. You know, he's got four CS. He's did I mean, Death Prophet versus DK. Can't really blame him. It's twelve versus four. It's it's a rough lane no matter what, and I'm not sure exactly how you how you deal with this because. It's consistently just going to be such a difficult lane for him. Already going to be level four versus, oh, I guess Blitz is going to get level level th uh, four here in a second as well. That's a nice way to do it. You're able to hop on over, steal one of the. Oh, he didn't get the rune. Never mind. <laughs> I'm mostly just surprised that Bambo's still alive down here. Oh, Cap, going to get caught again. They have the Sunray. The battle continues. Nobody is coming over to help this out for the moment, but he might be able to survive. No, the snowball hits onto two. Now gonna have to Icarus dive away, and unfortunately, no way to find a return kill. Yeah, this is tough. They can't quite get like these little setups that you might be imagining. Obviously, disruptor not the best here early on, and he's still level one. I mean, oh, <laughs> he's just rocking they're going that for a courier strike. snipe. Oh, it's dead. It's the bottle. Oh, it's oh, that's it. Oh no, it's over. Oh, oh the purchase. The they heal. updated the heal. Jump away. Nicely done. All right, they dodge one. You gotta, you gotta take what you can get there. Oh man! All right, good stuff. The quick fingers. <laughs> that would have been a disaster if they lose that DK bottle. Like that's the only way you live in this lane. Yeah. Well, pretty good recognition there, and they're able to get away from that one. Again, it, it's kind of, it, it's been a really rough early start here for Veggies. Like, the Disruptor rotates over to try and secure the rune, wasn't able to get it in time. DP gets it, and then as he's walking back up, he gets taken out again. Like. They're just, they're really struggling. And unfortunately, I, I don't even know if they're really going to be able to get a ton out of the Earthshaker. He's got level 4, which is nice, uh, and 10 CS, but it's a really hard game. Yeah, this is a very difficult matchup. It's very reminiscent of, like, Darkseer versus Animage, where you just get all your mana burn and you feel so useless. Oh, Jeez, up again. Not, not a surprise. Still going. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be able to catch him. Three heroes are here. There's just no way. And Snowball, they get the Avalanche, but it's actually not going to hit onto anybody. And that's going to be a kill. Matthew is stuck there for the moment, but no luck in terms of being able to stop this. And again, it just looks like Infamous are so on their game. And now it's nighttime. They're going to end up trying to think about even diving Merlini here. He's got to be careful. 
Yeah, I really like the way that they're playing this up, too. Uh, you, you understand that the Death Prophet and the Tusk are a fantastic combo, but do you really need to pressure oh. this Dragon Knight? Mid lane, greedy. He's not uh, taking a ton of damage. They need to be able to get the glimpse on him, but they don't have glimpse <laughs> right now. He's healing up so much. Are you kidding me? Oh, man. Greedy is so hard to bring down. And unfortunately, that is going to... Uh, that's going to be another death going the way of Infamous. <clears throat> Ouch, that is rough. That's Death Prophet in a nutshell, right? It's very, it's very much just Viper. Same idea. You bring a couple of heroes, you're like, oh, we gotta slow that guy down. Can't let him farm. And then you know, you're just losing heroes as you're diving under towers trying to kill them. It, it was rough because you looked at that. They had the Invis rune. I think that if they try and coordinate that gank a little bit better and like have Disruptor come in at the same time as they end up going in, it was just a miscommunication basically. Then maybe they find it. But even still, it was really tough. Um, and probably DP would have backed out at that stage anyways. But meanwhile, over here in this offlane, again, you've got Night Stalker level 4 and SL in the area. They're going to be able to take this creep camp and a whole heck of a lot of them with it. They're, they're really accelerating in their farm. Yeah, oh. Top lane's lost, mid lane's lost. Let's go bottom Looking? and Sunray on Kataro at least. You know, oh. Get something out of this game. That was a lot of damage. I mean, for yeah, a level 3 hero. Oh, Kataro, he's trolling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What a guy. Bam and this lane is mega scary once uh, he's six, right? Because this whole time you've seen Bamboo just down here with no mana, right? Yeah. And, and now you know that ultimate's up and it's just so scary. <laughs> Trying to put the fear in him. Greedy again is going to do a little bit more damage onto Blitz here. A couple more right clicks. He might even think about diving this uh, one potentially. They're going to end up know. being able to get the stun. He is in a ton of trouble. Trying to bottle through this. He ends up going down. Oh my god, DP is a really, really strong hero, and they're actually going to rotate in now as well. They're going to bring the, the Night Stalker and the Tusk, looking to see if they could find this Phoenix. Haven't been able to see him as of yet, but now they got eyes on him. Void is going to come. He's forced to Icarus dive away. Had that been a silence at the last moment, that would have probably been a kill. Yeah, Purge is like, please don't have silence level. Please don't have silence level. <laughs> so, sometimes, uh, this is probably the most common Night Stalker build you'll see, is just the 202. Valuing the damage uh, a little bit higher. Well, and down in the bottom lane, Anti Mage was continuing to throw out that mana burn. They are uh, they are not really afraid of anything right now. The the one bright spot that you do have is that this tiny has been farming pretty effectively. He had to go back for the bottle, and again, it's a question of how do you accelerate though. Like, does he need to try and find kills at this point, or do you think it's more about just trying to get his first couple of items up that allow him to fight? Oh god. Uh, uh, there's Blitz no time for again. <laughs> Yeah, Blitz is going to end up going down here again. Goes into Dragon Form, tries to turn around for the stun, but the Exorcism is already going to be there. They're healing from afar. Might be able to actually do this. He's dropping solo and does end up being able to get dropped down. Matthew is not going to die. The Icarus dive away. Capitalist is also going to end up falling here. And my god, Infamous are just all over veggies. Yeah, they just had a really solid game plan and they executed. I was really expecting so much pressure mid on the Blitz with that Death Prophet and Tusk, and I'm just thinking like, oh, they'll shut down the DK and Blitz won't be able to do anything, but I mean, you already know the DK is not going to farm well against the Death Prophet anyway. You don't need to kill him over and over, right? It's not like yeah. he hits this power peak of six and suddenly gets all this damage that like a Death Prophet does, right? He can, yeah, kill the tower, but he's not that amazing. It's mostly just the range stun that he benefits from at that point. Yeah. So why not just head over and take care of Mer uh, Merlini with your nice early heroes and dumpster his lane? Oh, this could be a nice opening if he's able to find it. He's going to toss Excel up in the air, and that's going to be a kill. So one going back their way. We talked about that being, like, the one hero that they could kill in this game, I think. Uh, everybody else is so tanky, and they end up being able to take advantage. We did it, guys. 10 to 3. They're getting there. Oh. Um, Snowball. Cap does have the kinetic field. Is going to drop it down. Holds on to 2. I don't know if they have enough damage to actually turn this back around, though, and... Yeah, they're going to uh, have to call off the charge. All right, all right, living, living. What about bottom lane? What's Bamboo up to? Get another pull off. Try, just trying to guarantee some farm comes his way. Maybe if he gets that blink dagger at some point, he might be able to do, uh, turn this thing around. It's definitely possible. 
Yeah, that's that's got to be the goal, I would imagine, is to try and make something happen with the farm that he gets. And, you know, he is level 7 at this point, so has that Echo Slam that's already been used oh, once. Lane. They're going to try and go on to this. Silence is going to be there. They go into darkness mode now, seeing if they can find a kill. They do have the Avalanche. Oh, it ends up missing, God. and there's the toss forward. That did, like, no damage. Oh, God. Capitalist is going to end up going down now. They get the stun on it, too. Merlini says, see you later, nerds. It ends up trying to TP out of there, but Cap is going to die. Oh man, that was unfortunate, but they might be able to make something happen down the bottom lane. They end up already dropping down the ulti. That's going to end up being one kill going their direction, and Katerahayama trying to escape right now from the trees. They get the stun, aren't going to be able to find the follow-up, unfortunately, as he TPs away. Or blinks away, rather. He's still actually hanging out here. Uh, I feel like he's going to go back in once he sees, like, bamboo spells go down or something. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh this is good stuff. Well... That's exorcism up top. Merlini's safe haven is safe no more. Yeah. I mean, they 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 really want safe? to kill this AM. <laughs> The one thing that you could say is that AM is actually not going for the Vanguard build. He's going straight into... Oh, stun. They get the Dragon Tail from afar. There's the Fissure laid down. Also going to be able to get the Enchant Totem and the Echo Slam for good measure. They find it really well played. And unfortunately, in the same time, the top lane ended up going down as Merlini died to the combo of heroes up there. And they might end up losing something more for this as the Tier 1 tower goes down. But at least they got the moral victory. You know, they got that enemy mage at least once. Who actually got the kill? Oh. Went, oh. Finger of nice. death? Oh, that wand. Man, that was really close. He wanted that one solo, but that was really close. Oh, so it's, it was Bambo that got it, though, right? Oh, nice. He's 1,800 gold. Yeah, he's, he's stacked. Veggies are doing it? I think that they might be. And, I mean, the thing is, like, Phoenix also now has level 6. Bambo has his level 6 for a while and is going to be able to get his Blink Dagger relatively shortly. There's ways back into this game, but it's very difficult, particularly just because of how much this DP has in the mid lane. It was such a, a great matchup for her, and this is going to be tough. Yeah, they're, they're just, like, knocking down objectives at this point, right? T1 top, down. Tier 1 mid, down. They can start looking towards Roshan as well, even being the Radiant side team. Gotta imagine they have a little bit of a better handle on it currently. Mm. Dire side. Cap, he was probably thinking about that. I wasn't quite uh, expecting that line to run out of there. Almost had the glimpse. Yeah, it looks like they wanted to try and fight this, as they also TP'd in the, uh, the Phoenix, but... Bambo from afar just throws out one stun onto Katarayama and it's gonna have to back out for the moment. They actually are going to dive this Earthshaker. There are five heroes here. Dodges away from those ice shards. Oh my god, did you see that minimap? They're having none of it. They get the ward down as well, so that's gonna be able to get some pretty good vision. Oh, Purge might be in trouble if he steps out too far here. His vision is... Oh god, he's about to realize that there's some problems coming his way. The oh, no. shards from oh, afar, no. they get the silence down, as well as the hex, and maybe he can get... No, he's dead. Yeah, man. Even level 1, that 5 second silence is just... No way you're surviving that. Even going for the Midas as well here, so... Guaranteeing he'll get up into that Aghanims of a nice little timing. Essentially saying there's no way that Veggies ever get roached this game. <laughs> like, by the time they'll have the levels and the farm to actually kill it... Well, we're just going to have the uh, the Agnums rocking here, and I don't think you want to fight Roche with that. Yeah, that's really difficult. I, and, I mean, you are seeing now as well that they're starting to take down those towers in the bottom lane. It looks like Veggies wants to come and contest this. They realize that they are going to be completely out of any ability to fight otherwise, and goes the Icarus Dive forward. That means that they're not going to be able to have the stun. There's going to be the silence as well on the Blitz. They've been able to catch there onto the Night Stalker, so he at least is going to go down. They block off his way with the Fissure, and that's going to be one kill going their direction. They also stop the Tier 2 from going down. Blitz still has the Haster, and he's looking for a little bit more, but he's really far away from the rest of his team. Even if he gets this, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to catch up in time. He gets the stun from afar onto the Tusk. They are going to be able to get the long range fissure from Bambo as well and there's the snowball back so he's going to be going over to those creeps they drop down that as well and Tiny ends up finding the kill the sun ray in conjunction with that avalanche finds it so a, a nice little turn of events for veggies there yeah that's pretty much the best fighting ground for them right like pushing them away from a tower and then using your disruptor to try and punish any sort of over aggression that's essentially the dream scenario so they, uh, they didn't actually need the glimpses this time, in terms of like the uh, the future catch and everything. Capitalist mm. having a smoke now, it doesn't look like there was any vision. They, oh, they actually just saw the courier come in though, on that angle, mm. um, through that ward, so they might know they're smoked up. 
Merlini uh, not isn't acting with them. like it. And Greedy is here. They get the Fissure from a little bit far away. There's the Enchant Totem as well. And now they drop the Static Storm. He's in a lot of trouble. That was an Invis room, but they already have the Sentry. There's the Lift oh, Up no, with the Yule Scepter. Oh, God, that really hurts. And he really would have liked that one right now. Now they need to get out of here. There's going to be the Avalanche from a four, but they get the Finger of Death. That kills off Capitalist on the Disruptor and just trying to escape for the moment. Infamous are chasing him. There's going to be the Sunray, but I think that that's going to need to be an escape. Purge jumps away for the moment and Blitz not quite tanky enough unfortunately oh my god I infamous agree. he's actually so good <laughs> i i can't believe he waited so long like knowing that bamboo was going to try and hold that echo slam and i think try and get the kill secure or just he's dropping low like right when he's about to leave the kinetic field and uses that yules at the absolute perfect moment i mean damn that that's an instant cast dude there, yeah. there's no reaction to that that's just mind games he was ready he knew what he needed to do and was able to get away from it so Really well played. Greedy to me has been one of the standout players in this game. It, like he, he feels like he's always in the proper position. He rotated up to that top lane, got the kill onto Merlini while they were killing the AM as well. He's just been playing really great. But Bambo does have his blink dagger now as well. You do get the avalanche toss combo onto Katara Hayama. There's the fissure from afar. Can they find the kill though? It doesn't look like it as the blink is going to be enough to make sure that they escape. And Tiny also has a blink dagger. So Again, I'm, I'm, I feel like they need to have so much damage in this game, though. They're going to be lacking it forever. Blitz caught out in the mid lane. Maybe going to go down? Yeah, he's, he's definitely dead. Yeah, it's understandable going for all these blinks, though, just because it is greedy on the Death Prophet, and you know that you got to try and burst her down before she gets that ultimate off. And other than, like, Avalanche Toss, you don't really have anything. You'd have to rely on just the silence and, like, running up and right-clicking and everything along those lines, so... It's uh, it's gonna be hard though. It's so difficult. How do you initiate on a greedy, especially with his yules now? And he's just fake popping the ultimate in mid, by the way. Like oh. him banging his head. You see this? Nice. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> this is this is their style. This is their dota. It's what they do. Bambo silence for the moment. Void down as well. Gonna be able to catch him out, and that should be the kill. Yep, they end up being able to find it. Again, greedy as well as that night stalker always on point and together. They're getting what they need, and actually. Capitalist was underneath the ward. He's going to drop down that kinetic field, see if he can find the escape, but he's actually hemmed in as well by those ice shards. Oh man, punched into the stratosphere. Uh oh. <laughs> you okay there? Things aren't looking too good. <laughs> it's been a tough one, that's for sure. Um, and so again, solid from Infamous. They look, they look really good this game. That's the thing is that like they've they have been practicing a ton together and in these types of games where being able to read somebody's play inside the game is just so important uh, now more than ever. They're actually going to be able to go for this now or are going to be able to throw out the Icarus Dive. Does not drop the Supernova as of yet, but there's going to be the Sunray and that's a lot of damage going back their direction. They're going to be able to find two. Tiny gets the double and that was a huge one for them. Yeah, the immediate smoke up just for the move speed. Oh, they but do you know pick what? It out, though. They they saw it with that frozen sigil right there, so I don't yeah. think that they're going to be able to find this too easily. I mean, they're even creeps. They just need that movement speed trying to catch her. I mean, infamous are still sticking around. They need to be careful here. They're going to chase them all the way across the map. <laughs> well, he's like, I got this arcane rune. I'm going to use oh, it. Oh, he got one. That's going to be an easy one. Can they find another? He's got Blink back up in three seconds. If he guesses the right direction, Yo, he might be able to this. find this. He's looking for one. He are going to be able to get the jump forward, though. They end up dropping down the Echo Slam. Merlini's going to be able to walk away. Maybe going to end up going down. No, alive on 10 HP, but Katero Hyam ends up being able to drop back. Greedy dropping low ends up going down to the combo of the Exorcism as well as that Mana Void. And suddenly, four are dead. Dead. Oh my god, Infamous, jump out. Huge plays. We didn't get the Death Prophet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they tried, they chased. Oh. That was one of those comical dives. They just really wanted that kill. I mean, they literally chased them from there, like, all the way across the map. Like, again, you, you want to be able to find that one, but uh, just not quite there in time. Again, I don't think that we've seen a supernova this game. It's it really speaks to the problems that their lineup has. Like they've got to use the sunray to get the damage out there. They can't really use it for the control anymore because there's just so much magical resistance, particularly from the AM. Yeah, I, I think they just really wanted to be kind of pressuring themselves with the Dragonite. You know, yeah. walking into the towers, setting up under their own accord. It's much harder to counter initiate, I think, with the uh, the Phoenix Egg versus like where you're set up hiding in the fog. You know, and, and this. Instance Purge is always like rotating, just barely getting to the fights. He's never set up in time for it. 
Well, this might be the time to do it. They do have the Shadow Blade on Merlini, but unfortunately, there are also a lot of Sentry Wards around, so the Sigil is going to be able to spot it out. And I mean, they've got pretty devastating team fight if you think about it. Like Blitz also is about to be able to hit level 11, and then you start adding in splash damage on top of all of this. You got to be careful if you're infamous. A, a lot of gold going back their way could turn this very rapidly. I'm not counting anybody out to, just quite yet, but that uh, that BKB might be. <laughs> I don't know, greedy. It's like, all right, guys, we get all this magical damage. We're gonna do it. We're gonna silence her up. Oh, she's got a BKB catalyst. Could you just grab an eggs, man? That would be great. <laughs> all right, he'll start farming that up now. Yeah. Practically there. Dyer has used scan. Oh, I love this right here, by the way. The newest patch change. That's good stuff. Oh, that is nice. I haven't actually seen it. I I've heard, but that that was fantastic. <laughs> Hype. Thanks, Valve. Thanks, thanks, and Valve. we got numbers. Have you seen this as well? Oh, you yeah. Can, like, select the heroes with your numpad. Like, I yo. forgot about this. All right, let's see if we can do it. Valve, I've been listening. I am, I am not capable of doing this yet. I'm going to need to work on some more obsing skills before I'm, I'm, I'm caught up with it. Like five? All right, there we go. Look at that. It's good stuff. Jump over to them again. All right, I'm done messing around with this. I'm just going to go back to my other thing. You're trying to trick me, Mop Hacks. I'm not going to fall for your Canadian ways. Hey, I mean, uh, they're just trying to put Pimp out of a job, all right? That's, what, that's what it is. Um, well, Tusk right now also does have the urn. He's building towards that Force Staff, and that's one of the ways that maybe you're going to be able to improve that survivability of Greedy. There's been a couple of times where it's been like they caught them in that, that uh, Echo, uh, Echo Slam combo as well as you know the Fissure from afar, and if they're able to Force Staff somebody away, and make sure that that uh, DP gets her BKB off. It's it's going to be so hard for them to find any type of kill. Yeah, that's going to be a really nice pickup here. It's always good when you're dealing with uh, terrain too. Even though you're the one who has the ice shards, but you got Fisher on the other side, it, it can always change the fight around. Yeah, that was close. I was really close. That's actually a snowball a little bit out of position. Merlini's going to shadow blade away uh, because that's a thing and. Meanwhile, the jump forward, Bambo just explodes! Kaitama Hayama, not afraid of anything, and Blitz is going to need to run away right now. He does have his level 2 ultimate, it just got popped, and he's going to be slowed down. There's going to be the Avalanche to try and secure their escape, but Capitalist caught as well. They pop the Manta style, he is going to go down. Oh, God, when it rains, it pours on the vegetables. Oh, it's pretty rough. Is this that uh, that nerf that everyone thought was coming for Phoenix? Is this lose ray? Did it happen? Did I miss a patch note? It might I have. This hero always wins. It's tough. I mean, they really don't have a lot of damage outside of it right now. That's like the only source of their damage almost outside of like an Earthshaker combo. And Merlini does a lot right there, but you can see it still doesn't bring that DP down to below half HP. They've got to get a big team fight combo together, but unfortunately, they just lost their melee barracks. Yeah, uh, so much of this last, like, 15 minutes even, you're kind of looking, well, I mean, if they get to high ground, we have a fantastic high ground team. Disruptor, Earthshaker, the Egg, uh, a couple of Blink Daggers here and there, but Ooh. when uh, when oh. you don't get set up for that first initial high ground, you just lose a melee racks, that's... This That's could be it. This is, they're, they're looking for it. Is it going to be the big play that we've been waiting for this whole time? Merlini jumps in. Is it going to be able to catch? No! And now they're waiting for the counter initiation, but the finger of death comes out. Sunray up on high ground there. It's actually going to be the supernova. Capitalist hasn't been able to get off his ultimate, though. And meanwhile, on the other side, it's just all gone wrong. Blitz is going to end up getting caught out as well. They are going to be able to blink away on the Earthshaker, but honestly, there's just nothing doing. And down here on the bottom side, they're chasing down after Bambo again. He is going to end up getting dropped and up being able to pull the ultimate on him as well full team wipe infamous lose nothing and unfortunately veggies lose everything gg well played ends up getting called game number one go in their direction yeah this was just a solid execution right from the start from infamous like they had the lanes they wanted i think they got it matched up um, they knew what they wanted to do right just let the death prophet and the dk do their thing we're gonna focus top make sure merlini can't do anything and then you have am versus Earthshaker. Like, that was a fantastic pick. They read that it was going to be the offlane Earthshaker. Not exactly a surprise when you already have a Disruptor and Phoenix and you pick it. Mm. So, <laughs> why not just get one of the best hard carries who usually can have a rough laning stage except for against a couple of those core matchups like that Darkseer and that Earthshaker. So, solid stuff from Infamous and uh, we'll see where we want to go from game number two.
Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We're going to hop into game number two in just a little bit here. Again, best of three, Summit 5 American qualifiers. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes. Follow us on Twitter if you feel so inclined, at Lyrical Dota, at Mopax. But more importantly, continue following the tournament. See you guys in a bit.